And, and uh, again, we will, uh, we usually posting all of these recordings and we have the re recordings of the previous webinar. So you guys can, can refer to that. It's all, it's all available. Great. So welcome. Uh, welcome everyone. And uh, let's kick it off for today. Okay. Uh, do you see my screen okay? I will assume yes. Okay, so today we're talking about the art of creative thinking with pre-innovation platform. And really what we're trying to achieve from today is following all the, uh, all the previous webinars where we dove into different tools and different very specific things. We wanna have a very high level overview of what's in the platform. And how do we work with the platform? What's the processes of that and so on and so forth at the very high level, just to give people the understanding of our vision uh, of how the innovation and problem solving projects even should be, should be, should be done. Again, we're not enforcing any specific, uh, any specific processes, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Usually we start uh, with, with quotes. And in a quote for, for today is uh, from Edward de Bono. Uh, creativity involves breaking out of established pattern, patterns in order to look at things in a different way. And realistically speaking, uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do with this, uh, with, with the platform. We tr we're trying to help people think differently by, by breaking out of these patterns, breaking out of the something called uh, uh, psychological inertia. And just a reminder, the uh, PRIS ecosystem overall, it's not only a platform, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a moment. Overall, it's the machine-assisted facilitator for problem-solving and innovation projects. So let's dive in. The agenda for today that we wanted to propose is all of these things, it's quite a lot. So let's let's try to get through that. First of all, we want to understand and answer the question, why do we even need problem solving tools of any kind to solve problems? Many people say, well, I'm an engineer or not an engineer. I can solve problems by just thinking about it, trying different things. So why do I need any, any tools? So we'll try to answer that question. Uh, then we'll, We'll answer the question of what Prius is, what Prius is, what the Prius platform and Prius ecosystem overall. Then where uh, and and where and and when should we use Prius platform? The benefits of the entire uh, Prius ecosystem. We'll then go into the uh, uh, project overview of project structure and the project the available creative uh, creative tools. Uh, we will use platform to platform itself to demo these things and talk, talk about all of the these different pieces in the, inside the project. Uh, there is a lot of questions raising about privacy and security, so we want to uh, we want to uh, dive into the some level of details for privacy, security, and policies that we have in place. Uh, pricing. That's that's a consistent question that people are asking. And apparently, we need to improve on, on how do we expose that information better, I guess. But we'll talk about that. And some latest platform innovations and some sweetness that we added lately. And uh, we're pretty sure that a lot of people are not even aware of that. So let's dive in. First of all, why do we need creative tools? And in, in a nutshell, it's we need creative tools to have some additional abilities of ourselves to naturally that we not naturally have. But let's go by example. Let's say, why do we need a hammer? Right, the hammer gives additional weight and hardness to our hand. Right, so we can we can nail the nail into the wall and not using hand. Why do we need a car or a truck? Addition, again, additional strength and speed to, to move things faster and heavy weights, potentially things faster. Uh, Excel, kind of same example. It gives us additional ability of memory, 
um, and, and, and speed of calculations and so on. And the examples, uh, 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 the examples are endless, but creative thinking tools in reality, it gives us additional intellectual capacity that will help us generate uh, generate more ideas, solve problems, and eventually innovate. Okay, can, can I make a comment? Of uh, course, uh, sure. Of course, one of uh, about creative tools that I use. Mm -hmm. Creative tools that I use are the literature. I'm always looking for books that talk about how to make things or how to innovate things and all like this. So. My mm -hmm. creative tools are the insights that others have in doing their work to get somebody in a totally different area. For instance, I may watch a, a uh, show on uh, uh, natural science and see how different animals work with each other. Or mm -hmm. I, I may uh, watch uh, crime dramas to see how detectives solve cases or uh, this sort of thing. The more, the, the greater you let your experience be, the better you have to draw from those different areas to solve a particular problem where you are. You don't know everything. And the more you can learn from other people helps you to improve your creativity, or at least for me it does. Right. Right. I, and I think it's for everybody. Now, what what we've seen, uh, what we've seen a lot of times uh, from uh, from people, they say, "Oh, we can just use pen and paper. We can use a whiteboard. Uh, we use tools all the time." Right? right. Correct. The problem with that that none of that information is left anywhere. The whiteboard getting wiped. In the best case scenario, they take a picture and that picture is just gone somewhere in a pile, right? So one of the benefits of the tool, and, and we'll talk about that, or any tool, any collaborative tool that stays there and getting used all the time, is we keeping that information in there available at any point in time. So you can actually go back and learn and see what's being done and how it's being done and, and so on. I might mention too is what you're saying is how management consultants like McKinsey and Company they solve their problems and they file all of these away. And when they come to another client that has a similar problem, they do a search of all those solutions and see what they can bring forward. So, like you're saying yep. here, your your photograph that you took, you saved that in a file, and then you could go back later and mm -hmm. see it let you jump start in the, uh, a new situation you look at absolutely or in larger in larger corporations for example uh, uh some corporations they're trying to uh, keep sort of a knowledge base so when yeah. the problem arises again uh, or similar problem or close to that problem people have some resources to go back and look into what's been done before and kind of jump start their knowledge like you're saying uh, from there. Sure. Right. All right, let's continue. So what is PRISGURU? PRISGURU is um, many things combined. We'll talk in a moment, but let's start with Pris Innovation Platform. And the platform is, first of all, it's a web-based machine-assisted software uh, that helps us to uh, for root cause analysis and eventually engineering problem solving and innovate at the end of the day. It is a SaaS platform, SaaS as a service, uh, software as a service that integrates all the th creative thinking tools that we're all talking about, but we usually forget about what else? What about the documentation, the reporting, the project management itself, right? So the, the, uh, the, the PREZ is combining all of these into one place. PREZ components, uh, it's actually not only one thing, it's several things. And we, we call it uh, Pre's pre ecosystem, really. Uh, it consists of the Pre's platform, first of all, the one thing, the one core thing that we always talk about. And this is where the problems are solved. This is where the actual work is done. Uh, sometimes we even call it integrated engineering environment, right? So this is where the engineers go and they do the work. 
Then Chris Hub, it's another component. We will dive into that in a moment. Uh, it's where the the work, anybody's work, if they're willing to share that with the world or group or corporation, uh, they uh, it's where they're showing off this work. They make it public. Then we have the training resource. It's consistently growing resources for training resources in form of articles, knowledge-based documentation, these webinars that we're recording, and, and you know, whoever is... Uh, is uh, joining us live um, and then of course as services training coaching uh, we're doing a lot of facilitation services and consulting of course now when that's the next question that we should answer when should we use yeah. the uh, pre's uh, pre platform or in fact any tools Right in in our in our case, we focusing on manufacturing processes and in processes overall and things like excursions. So any unexpected deviation of, of anything, any parameters or or, or anything, uh, we are helping with investigation and mitigation for that. Uh, excursion prevention. So usually when something happens, we have you know we need to investigate, we need to mitigate, and then we need to make sure it never happens again. So all of that process is taken care of. Uh, with the help of prints. Then there is a, a, something called the Six Sigma and Kaizen events uh, in the organizations. They usually, they as events, we see that as an ongoing events, quote unquote. Uh, we believe that these things, that needs, they need to be done all the time, every time, and not just like defined events. Uh, yield improvement, cost reduction initiatives, that's a big uh, uh, big initiatives, very complex initiatives, usually, um, you know, experience from Intel that's happening all the time. And one important note, uh, there is fairly new ISO uh, uh, 56,000. It's called, it's called innovation management. Now, innovation management, if, you, if somebody wants to get certified under this ISO, uh, one of the requirements is to use tools, problem solving tools. That's the definition, one of the definitions of, of innovation management. And again, PREs being one of these tools, or I should say in its kind, it's the only tool. Uh, the R&D in startups, uh, this is more of a goal-oriented project where we need to solve very specific problems. Startups doing it all the time, every time. R&D groups doing it all the time, every time. They give them a target and they go in and they go into that direction. Uh, that goes into into new and non-standard ideas and solutions. It's all part of the innovations. Uh, and the documentation, something that engineers hate doing all the time is documenting. So they did, they solved the problem. Now they need to invest even more work to, uh, to document it and present it. And of course, there is the right, uh, rights protection. And we will talk about that in a bit. Uh, in education world, innovation and creative thinking now is getting, uh, is getting more and more uh, uh, visibility and more trend in universities, colleges, high schools, sometimes even even earlier than high schools. Uh, there is trainings, workshops. Uh, we see that in, in uh, uh, consulting companies or even individual consultants that are doing that. And of course, the, per, the, the personal use. Personal use is more of a that people want to develop themselves, develop their creative thinking themselves to be able to show off to their management, to their peers and so on, uh, enhance their professional profile. So if you think about that, the uh, same as people saying, I'm, I've, I've published X number of articles, or I did this, did that, it becomes part of their resume. That's another piece as a part of their resume. And that helps with career development as well. Okay, Alex, before you move from that slide, of course, I would put on this slide business applications because you, you have different transactional processes like mm -hmm. accounts receivable, uh, 
customer relations. I don't know what all that th right. we tend to think of the Prius for more the hardcore manufacturing world, but it can be used in business. It can be used in medicine. It can be used in all sorts of applications. And right. maybe maybe I'm jumping too far ahead on this. I don't know. No, no, no. You're you're in the right place. Uh, the difficulty here is, yes, it is generally speaking, any process in the world, right? Uh, is just very, very hard to focus on everything, right? So that's why we're trying to focus more on manufacturing, but of course it's applicable almost anywhere in any industry, in any processes. Uh, we use it ourselves for, for management problems, right? Uh, and, it's, and it's interesting to see how people take the tools like yourself, take the tools and, and and uh, apply it somewhere else in some other industry, some other processes, some other domains, right? Uh, but initially, the development of this tool, the pre's overall, was around engineering and manufacturing. Okay. So benefits of the pre's platform itself, or pre's ecosystem. First of all. It's one-stop shop, right? Uh, everything, everything that you need for the problem-solving uh, project of any kind, everything is in one place. Uh, all the data is kept in one place. Everybody who has an access to it has the uh, has the access to the uh, to the information. There is no need for emails or different presentations or some documents somewhere that usually spread around. We literally see in uh, email threads of hundreds of reply alls uh, with different documents in it, and people can't even understand where to start. Uh, it enables teamwork in in organization um, in an organ like larger organizations or, or or smaller smaller teams as well as personal, like we talked about. From a project management perspective, again, we, as we said, we have the project, uh, the creative thinking tools that integrate it into the whole project management uh, around, uh, around uh, problem solving. So, some of the tips of the tip of an iceberg is, of course, task management, something very important. If you think about uh, the whole process of innovation project especially if it's a long running innovation project, it's meetings. And like we're showing here, we have the meetings feature as well. Uh, it's meetings, people getting ARs, they're getting tasks to, to work on. They need to make decisions. They need to, uh, they need to prioritize what they're working on and how they move towards the, the, the ultimate goal. And this is all around the project management and how the, that group of people does it. Now, while people working on the project itself, there's different things that needs to be done, right? Uh, for example, the all the way from a very, very start from a background and documenting what we know into analysis and eventually solution. Uh, and this is where the creative thinking tools themselves, the core of the platform has actually come into play. And we currently have uh, 11 of them. We'll talk about them in, in the next slides. Uh, and more coming. Now, documentation proven to be extremely, extremely important because <clears throat> as, as we mentioned, people already did a lot of work. Why do they need to invest even more to document it differently? Uh, and it also helps in how, how people communicate it to their management, to their peers. Uh, eventually, we, we allowing to communicate all of that information, all of that thinking process between different different people. And, that, and it's all done, done automatically for them. Okay. Yeah, David, you wanted to? No, no. Okay. Go, please go ahead. Cool. So uh, praise platform. First of all, uh, we want to go a little bit overview of the structure of the project. We specifically structured the project in a specific order. 
again, it doesn't mean that we're enforcing an order in that process. What it means though, this is our proposed kind of flow of information and proposed flow of thinking, right? So first of all, the overview. Every project will have an overview. And this is the things that we know, like David, like you uh, talked about, these are the facts, the, the symptoms that we know about. Everything that we know about the problem, about the project, about the situation itself, everything is dropped into, into the overview. Uh, published projects, I'll come back in, uh, into that in a moment, but published projects, this is where we, when and if we decide to make the project public in uh, something called Praise Hub, this is where we do that. And it's here on purpose because we, we want to allow people to do that at the very beginning. So they, instead of doing the work altogether, uh, completing everything and then pub making it public, we allow people to collaborate with a much larger audience. Of course, the tasks and task management, everything is in there around tasks. The meetings, it's a, so if you think about it again, meetings, people getting tasks, they're going to do some work, they come back to the meetings, another task, and it's the cycle that goes on. Then, of course, the problem, uh, the problem statement. This is where we're starting to define what we don't know and starting to uncover what we don't know, right? And defining the problem statement and what is it we're actually going to solve. Of course, the creative thinking tools, this is where all the information that we're keeping about creative thinking tools, again, we have 11, 11 of them currently. Uh, throughout the project, all the ideas that we're getting gener that gets generated, they all dropped into this idea management uh, section. Anywhere, <coughs> at any point in time, the, uh, when you record an idea, it's all going to drop, going to be dropped in here. So at the end of the day, when you generate the final solution, you use all of that information that you collected until now, and the ideas that you collected until now, and generate the document about uh, about the final solution. And of course, the report, and we'll look into that report. Now, a little bit high level on on, on uh, creative thinking tools. Again, 11 of them currently, we're working on more. Uh, we have some of the fairly well-known ones like Five Whys and, and Cause and Effect Chain or, or even brainstorming. All of these known tools, again, they're well-known, they're well accepted in, 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 the, in, the, in the public, but we have their, our own twist into that, our own improvements for processes, how to work with them. Round robin ranking, it's an extremely useful tool where we need to make any choice between different, between different options. And as we know, uh, and we had a, a webinar about that, by the way, um, actually we had a webinar about each and every one of these tools where we dive, dove into, into the details. Uh, but this tool allows us to make a choice out of many, many options. And, and this tool is actually integrated into many different places in the platform that, because we need to make decisions all the time. We need to make choices all the time. So this is where we using the tool, the tools, this round robin tool uh, power to help us with that. Urgency importance, it's a very similar concept, but it's specifically targeted to prioritize tasks and, and identifying the priorities of tasks. 40 principles, something that uh, coming from uh, trees directly with not many changes, but again, it's it's all around the, the documentation of that process. Uh, action preventing action, it is a tool that we build ourselves. It's coming from us, uh, purely from us. Uh, it's something that helps to identify what customer needs. Uh, nine windows, another tool that coming from, uh, from trees itself. Uh, not many changes in there from, from the tree's original concept. But again, we, we allow in a much more uh, easy and collaborative way of working with that tool. Uh, perception mapping. Perception mapping is uh, something that, it's a tool that allows us to find blockers uh, out of 
uh, out of majority of many perceptions that we need to perform to achieve a target. And of course, functional modeling, it uh, helps us to learn the system and, and find uh, which components are functions in there, which functions inside, inside the system, and eventually which comp components performing well or not and identifying the problem and trying to improve the system based on that. And then the process functional modeling, it's the expansion of the process uh, of the functional model on the process level. So one level up on the process level. And I'll pause here for a moment. Great. Okay, a, a question for you, Alex, about yes. the, those. Mm -hmm. This is the basic platform we have. Yes. Is it possible to integrate uh, project management and drawing and other sorts of tools with this? In other words, I use Microsoft Project to lay out my projects. I use mm -hmm. Visio to do drawings and that sort of thing. I use Excel to do all kinds of maybe calculations of things. Is it mm -hmm. possible for them to talk to the Prius platform? Uh, currently, there is no direct integration. Uh, we're just starting to talk about different types of integration. There's many, many, many different options that we can think about, even down to integration with a calendar, for example. Uh, but drawing tools and things like that, currently, the only thing that platform supports is it can keep all the information in one place. So if you created a file somewhere, uh, yeah, you can attach it to the project. If you create a calculation somewhere, you can attach it to any information and any piece of information, even into the task, into the project. So it's not necessarily direct integration right now. <clears throat> but that, it that, is that's what I was talking about, though. If, if you can put it in as attachments, to me, that's yes. okay because yeah, these yeah. are tools that are readily available to other people. <laughs> and you don't want to have some information that can't be shared because it's a uh, an Excel file or something like that. Right. So yeah. you, they, it is available and I'll them. show that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, and we'll we'll show that in a, in a second uh, in when we okay. move to the tool itself. So a note about privacy security, especially larger organizations when they're very, very uh, worried uh, about how their information is handled. What about their IPs and so on? So we did go through a privacy and security audit uh, with one of the companies, uh, extremely difficult audit actually, uh, but we came out of it uh, with very good scores. Uh, in general, all the data is encrypted anywhere in, in at rest and, and in transport, the infrastructure, we're using the well, well known, well established cloud provider that's certified for all kinds of industries. Uh, the application itself is consistently monitored by, by uh, one of the third party providers, it's called security scorecard. Uh, the from access perspective, it's all managed managed Hello, under. David. Yeah. Hi, Ronnie. Excuse me. Uh, it's all managed uh, managed under uh, very strict authentication and authorization rules. Uh, the concept of a private and a public information that we that we will talk about in a, in a hub. This information is kept in a separate, in separate stores on purpose. So whatever you uh, decided to make public, it's, it's sitting in one place. But if you decide to keep something private, it is completely separate, isolated, and nobody has an access to that. From procedures perspective, we have all the backups, the disaster recovery, the business continuity plans, incident management, and so on. Uh, now, if some companies, they require uh, additional installation and support on premise, it is also that. 
Uh, and note on price uh, plans and pricing. Uh, that's something that we can ask more often than we, than we expected. This is the overview of what we currently have. Uh, we have the free single user account. That's the one perfect for evaluation and trying all the tools. It has an access to almost everything with some, with some uh, uh, limitations. The personal pro is pretty much the same as the, the free account, but it, allow, it basically opens up all the capabilities for a single user within a single workspace. Uh, team workspace, it's the same as uh, it's access to everything, but it is a collaborative workspace where people starting to work on teams. Usually uh, this is, uh, ideally it's built for up to 20 people as a, as a recommendations of course it supports more than that and then the enterprise enterprise is something that is that we built uh, to allow enterprises um enterprises to um pretty much request any customizations or or any additional development and and of course the price there is not uh, is not one price uh, for all it's, it's a custom pricing in there and I'll pause here, pause here for a moment before we switch to the platform. All right, if there's no other questions, I will switch to the platform itself. So, we are now in platform and i really want to start from the very beginning i want to log out from this and get into the screen as login the login is available through different means from username or email and password and through google or linkedin and and things like the enterprise plan allows us to do is it allows us to to integrate even more login options like single sign-on for example we usually, I'm usually using the the uh, uh, Google Google login, and where we land first of all, it's a dashboard. It's a dashboard view that allows us to see pretty much everything that we allow to see within this specific uh, uh, workspace. It's all the projects that we involved in. It's all the ideas that under these projects and what the status of them. And we'll talk about the status in a moment. It's all the tasks that currently assigned to me. Uh, as that user and of course the meetings that we're talking about in these meetings uh, uh, that anyhow under any circumstances related to me either the ones that I created or the ones that I was invited to now the project uh, listing page uh, that's where we can see a flat list of all the projects now important to understand that some of the projects they are considered as in progress. These are the ones that we're currently working on and some of them completed. And also if we create a new project and let's say, well, let's keep this wizard for a moment, uh, new project for a future. Uh, we can also say, you know what? We're not gonna deal with that now. We'll save it for later, right? And that saving for later, that creates another section of project that we want to attend somewhere in the future it doesn't necessarily have to be right now. So it's sitting kind of in a backlog of things to do. And of course we can delete the projects and, and do all of that. Now this page also allows, that's one of the new additions that it also allows uh, uh, search. So uh, let's say we're searching cleaning issues, so we can search by by the title or description, or we can search by the name. Anatoly, for example. So every project that that related to Anatoly is going to be here, or or Alex. Everything related that I'm uh, part of is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna find it. So let's dive into the project itself and dive into, into the structure as we talked about. So immediately when we go into the project itself, we land on the overview. 
and this is as we mentioned this is the stuff that we know about the project about the problem about any symptoms and if we're getting a group of people into the room we're saying okay dump all the information that's the brain dump where it's all happening i'll skip the published projects for a moment i'll leave it to, to, to the end the next thing that we have is task management the task management it, it basically includes everything that we need under the sound for the tasks and the task is structured in a way that we have the task itself the description of the task itself and realistically when it's uh, when we uh creating the project it's very simple one-liner uh, you know describe the task but in there we have and, and David that also hopefully answers your question we have things like we can attach the files into the task and by the way David uh, you, you're muted if you if you want to talk uh, this is where we can attach files into the task uh, we can also put assignees we can switch a different assignees uh, to different people and so on and so forth people will be notified about their task since we working in problem solving world we want to say did this task what's the resolution of the task so we we're defining a task to solve a particular piece in the project and and we want to record the resolution of that and also is it actually was that task actually a solution for the problem that's very important as well so very standard uh, uh, task management, uh, as we all as we all see. Meetings, meetings is one of these things that we that we uh, added fairly recently. But if you think about it, meetings is very weird animal. M many people know that they need them, but everybody hates them. Uh, they not every not every time you can contribute to the meeting properly so we try to solve that problem in a way that if i'm in the initiator of the meeting uh i want to invite people but i also want to see if they have something to contribute for me in the meeting i want to expose the information i want to invite the people and i want to say is that person even interested in in participating in a meeting and if they do what are they going to contribute to that or are they going to be are they going to be uh, observers for example right so the concept here is instead of saying i need you into the meeting i'm saying i might need you into the meeting you tell me why so we inverting that whole model and if we create a meeting inside the the uh the workspace everybody is technically aware uh, able to see that plus the one that we're inviting to uh, inviting people they going through the process of accepting and accepting they want to say i want to be just an observer as if i want to learn something from this uh, from this meeting or i want to be a contributor actually have something to contribute or you can say there is nothing for me to contribute i want to decline it completely and that is fine right so in larger organizations where people are spending a lot of times on meetings uh half of the people that are sitting in these meetings they they pretty much not getting anything out of it so we we try to solve them of course everything is documented down to meeting notes problem statement this is as we mentioned somewhere uh, something that we were uh, we somewhere that we started to collect and think about the things that we don't know right uh, we built a full uh, process to help people to build problem statement. It starts with a current situation. It's the summary of what we know. And then uh, the disadvantages, right? The disadvantages is what what kind of potential problems it, it actually the, these current situation uh, creates for us. Now, one of the new things that we recently uh, recently introduced is kind of a help so sometimes it's a little bit hard to think about things that you know what can these things uh, uh what this current situation can, can be bad or or can, what can it cause we're using this is where the first integration with the ai that we have 
And that helps us to kind of facilitate with thinking and start the wheels going about, you know, these can be one of the potential options of why is it bad. Hey, Alex, David, a, quick, you want... a, yes. a question. You say mm -hmm. defects. What kind of defects are you finding on the on the wafer? Scratches, particles. Well, in the, in this oh, particular this case, thing, because it would you depending on what you those defects are, you would go in a different direction for the solution. Absolutely, absolutely, and this is where we uh, this is where we have the more details again about what we do know uh, about the defects in the overview. This overview holds all the information about the types of defects, when they're happening, why they're happening, how we identify them, how do we measure them, with them and so on. This is where, where we are. And when we start with a problem statement, of course, we can, there, there's no limit to this field. You can write anything you want. You can touch even images in, in here. Of course, in this particular example, uh, we, we decided to keep it short. But yes, there is no limit to that. And of course, when you describe in the current situation, it's really up to you and your group how detailed you want to go. Right. And then again, when you generate, when you get that current situation and you need to generate different potential problems that these things, that this situation causes, it can be many of them. Right, it doesn't doesn't necessarily mean you have to solve all of them, but it could be different problem, and you're actually solving one and only one of them. And this is where the problem statement or problem so to solve, how we call it, <coughs> uh, 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 kind of form, forms. So, so we can consider the the removing the defects as. Uh removing harms or hazards or that sort of thing from the process. Is that right? Well, imagine yourself, we have defects, right? So what kind of problems does it cause? And again, if we we are a group of people who work on this project, we are aware of what, what the defects are. It could be, could be a, a cracks, it could be dirt that causing causing different uh, different, um, I don't know, higher resistance in 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 uh, in uh, uh, conductors or whatever the defects are inside uh, on on the wafer, right? Different defects potentially could be on the wafer. It could be uh, it could be simple dirt. It now, what does it cause? In the water that's washing it. Sure. The I don't remember what in this case the defect is, but at the end of the day, it's something that reduces the quality of that wafer of the final product, right? What does it cause? Me, as an engineer who is working on it, could be one thing. For my manager who, who is looking at it, it, could be something completely different. For a CEO, it could be something third, right? For a CEO, it could be, oh my God, we're losing money. For me, it could be several things. It could be I'm getting cold in the middle of the night. I don't want to be cold in the middle of the night. Uh, it could be my yield is low and I'm, I'm not hitting my numbers that I was promised, uh, that I promised. It could be uh, many, many different things, right? So it depends what kind of problems I'm trying to solve. And if I'm trying to solve a problem of not getting cold in the middle of the night, just turn on the phone, problem solved, right? Uh, so it depends on what is it we're trying to solve, really. And this is where it's important to document everything in here so we can pick and choose from that. And I just want to be really conscious of time. We will have it running over. Uh, next thing is where the actual work is done. So creative thinking tools, uh, again, we kind of exposing the same picture that we, we showed on, uh, uh, on the uh, presentation. Any tool that we have available here, you can start, you can start any of them as many times as you want. 
but I want to uh, uh, try and uh, give one example of the tool, and that's the round robin ranking. Now, round robin ranking is, as we said, we want to be able to uh, select different uh, um, or choose one option out of many. So another sweetness that we added fairly recently is the import of large amount of data that we, we can have from a CSV in this case. And that just creates the entire list. So instead of typing it by hand, you can do that. The next uh, innovation that we added is the we added additional something called smart ranking. And it, as you can see, it reduces the number of comparisons that we need to do from, in this case, 435, which is quite a lot. It's a lot of work. It's efficient and it will bring result, but it's just a long time into 20, into 29 in this case, right? And uh, this smart uh, smart ranking doesn't produce any less, less of a result. It produces perfect results. Okay, that's another thing I wanted to, to show here. Now, this tool is integrated in many different places and I'll show uh, some of the examples where. Uh, cause and effect chain. Another example, we have uh, a structure of all the tools. They're very much, uh, very similar to each other. We have the subject, and subject is where we're putting the description about, again, what is it we're working on? Uh, uh, what is it we're analyzing using this particular tool? Then the analysis themselves, and of course, the conclusions that we're making outside, uh, out of these analyses. This tool also has an additional help from, from AI, where it kind of helps us think and helps us to, to identify different, or, or it's almost like the person that you talk to you know, saying, hey, what do you think about this? And he gives his own thinking, but it gets your wills going, right? And at any level, we can, we can ask for more and more kind of in, in information uh, to help us think about that. Um, same happens in, in uh, Five Whys. In Five Whys, uh, we have a separate webinar where we dive into the details of Five Whys and how we use it and why we use it this way. This too has an integration into, into, uh, into AI where it again helps us with a little bit more information, a little bit more thinking directions. Um, and functional model, that's the last one that I want to, uh, I want to show, uh, uh, right now, again, system description, the one that we're trying to, uh, to work on at this point and then analyze, we're building the functional model. In this case, it looks pretty scary, but it's actually, uh, it's, it's more scary than it, it actually is, uh, and the target of that is to find the different problematic ranks and functional ranks inside the, uh, of the component inside that particular system. And in this particular case, as we, as we can see, we're saying um, uh, which, which component is, is the most problematic. We see it's an error. We need to work on that. We need to potentially eliminate it. Eliminate it or or fix the problem, uh, fix the problem at that level within that component, and so on. Okay, on a previous webinar, you would mm -hmm. go back to the functional model. Can you do that? Go back to the drawing. Oh, to the drawing. Yeah, of course. This one, yes, that one. And I saw where you could make some change on this. Mm -hmm. And then immediately it would show up in the next screen. Yep. So that was, in other words, air particles here is a, a fan. You could say that this is fan moves. Well, maybe the fan blows too much air. For sure. And you want to make yeah, the, fan the fan run slower. Okay. Yeah. That's too much fan. air. And you too much air. And then you mm -hmm. go back to the the next the sheet you had after mm -hmm. with the bars. Yeah, let's let's say this is excessive. 
right? Okay. Now, if you go back here, the, oh, the model right. will... Yes, the right. Yeah. Yes, so, so what was your question? So, you, so when you make a change to the functional mm -hmm. analysis model, mm -hmm. it immediately will show up in the ranks. Correct. Correct. That's amazing. That's yeah, that's so amazing. That, that, that recalculates everything on, on any change uh, in documents that it, even more than that, you know, uh, we had several situations where we wanted to try different models. Uh, you know, what if we change a little bit here? What if we remove one of the functions and how does it look like? There is no reason not to keep that information in, inside the conclusions or, or any type of documentation that you want, right? So you, you can do that, like keep it for the future and add your comment and so on. Okay. Okay. So this is the functional uh, the functional model that we talked about. And then something else that I want to dive into is, is the process uh, uh, process functional model example is this, right? So again, same structure. We're describing the process in words. We model it. We have the summary and conclusion. And the modeling of the process itself is where we break them down into the process operations. Our previous webinar, we dove into the details of how to do that and what's the what's the concept of that. Uh, and in here, every step of every operations inside every operation inside the process, it has its own functional model as well and its own ranking. Right. And when we're going back to the model, it also will update you know, we change something in that model, it will also update this, these numbers as well, as well as the summary. And the summary will show everything about the process, how effective it is, which type of functions inside, inside here, and even what, what type of uh, uh, recommendations that we offer into for improvements. Uh, now, let's go to ideas. Ideas, again, as I mentioned, it's anything anywhere throughout the project where you thinking, uh, going through thinking, analysis, or anything else, ideas popping up into your head. And that's the whole concept of creative thinking tools. You break them down into things, you come up with ideas. You analyze something, you come up with ideas. Uh, you. I don't know, working with the uh, uh, 40 principles, you come up with the ideas and so on. Everything is getting dumped into, into this idea manager and all of it is available. This tool has the ability to rank and that's one of the integrations that we have uh, with the round robin ranking is saying, basically, how do I select out of all of these ideas in here? Which is great. Uh, and this ties into, into round robin ranking. This is also has the smart ranking, and as you can see from 66 is down to 11 comparison, comparisons, much more time, time saving. At the end of the day, uh, what, we, what we can do here is kind of mark for ourselves as engineers as working, working on this project, which ideas are winning in this case, and eventually propose a solution. And propose a solution, it is a free form, we're saying, out of everything that we investigated, out of everything that we generated throughout the project, now we can we can generate the actual solution or proposal for a solution. And of course, the report. The report consists of pretty much everything, everything under the sun that we ever worked inside the project, ever documented inside the project, starting from overview and problem statement. Uh, and this is the problem statement and success criteria, which we didn't touch. Uh, the winning ideas that we marked as winning for ourselves. And of course, all the tools that we uh, that we worked on, which ideas being generated throughout the tool, who worked on the tool, when did it happen, and so on and so forth. So every little detail inside the project is here. Of course, this is printable. You can print it, you can export it or you can just simply get get people uh, 
into the project and uh, get them get the information there uh, that way. And when we decide that we completed with the project, we just complete it. And I'll pause here for just a moment. And I apologize. I will. I will take another ten minutes of of your guys' time. So, let's talk about publishing project. Publishing project. It is our ability to literally publish the project to the world, to inside the organization, within a specific group, whatever we decide. And it's something called Prez Hub. Prez Hub is another part of the ecosystem as we talked about and it's the library of all of these projects right so for example the one that we just looked at the wafer cleaning uh, issues and what process we decided to make it public we decided to show it to the world now how does it look like it looks like all the overview like as we as we looked at the team who worked on it the problem statement, the tools that were involved in that, all the ideas that got generated. So everything in here, except obviously tasks and uh, and uh, uh, meetings, everything else is inside here. And people can go here and learn learn from it, and potentially potentially even ask to be part of that project. And this is where it becomes it really becomes part of potentially your resume because if you have your own page. This is an Anatoly's page that he's publishing. Uh, you have all the projects that you ever worked on. So your resume, this be, uh, effectively becomes part of your resume. And you're saying, these are the type of projects that was in the projects I was involved in in problem solving the world. Uh, the question was from James, can you publish the projects to LinkedIn or perhaps a Notion? And Notion, not really, but LinkedIn, we have all of these sharing capabilities, and this is what effectively publishes it to the to LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever it is. Um, but it's a it's a simple share. Uh, I'm happy to hear if there's any additional thoughts of what do you mean by by publishing it to LinkedIn. Yeah, I guess what I, I was I was thinking about was was if you are, say, for instance, you have a LinkedIn group and you wanted to mm -hmm. use LinkedIn uh, maybe to um, stimulate some additional kind of contribution and thinking around a particular aspect of the project, whether mm -hmm. there would be a way of creating a link back into the project, but potentially from LinkedIn so that you could drag maybe additional um additional con contributors additional ideas that kind of stuff yeah so it's it's basically uh, as i mentioned this is pretty much sharing the information on on any social media so this is a tool that we we're using for sharing really and if you go to linkedin it, it opens up a linkedin itself and it will publish all the information there and it is becoming a link eventually okay cool yeah right yeah cool. uh any any of these pages it has this little widget and you know i think it's i don't know about 100 or 200 different social media platforms so it's all here yeah okay all right. excellent good thank Great. you Awesome. The one last thing I want to touch on is, uh, I'll switch to personal, is uh, uh, first of all, the structure of the workspaces. Workspaces is, uh, imagine yourself different offices, different office space. You can have your own office, only you there, nobody can, can you know, enter there and see what, uh, what's going on. Uh, it's your own, it's your own world, you know, like your garage. Right, so it is your personal space. Uh, any group workspaces is like now. I decided to take my idea to you know and share it with others. You, you know, you take a, a, a meeting room and you invite people into the meeting room, saying, 
hey guys, let's work on this project. So this is the concept of all different workspaces, right? And something I want to touch, we did touch it, uh, a little bit on that, is the pricing model. And the pricing model, of course, as we mentioned, we have the free account. And the free account is uh, really to try out to try every tool that we have, every function that we have with some, some limitations, right? Uh, then the personal pro is removing all of these limitations, as I mentioned, uh, and we mainly build it for people like consultants or educators uh, uh, or just people to work with themselves. Uh, group, group work or teamwork, uh, that's the team plan. It is uh, um, allowing, again, all the tools, but now in the collaborative environment. And then enterprise, there is no price, price tag for that because there is many different enhancements that we that they uh, usually trying to do, usually around security. They want to say, I want SSO or not. I want on-premise installation or not. We don't know what enterprise might, might request. And this is where... Uh, uh, where it's basically a custom build plan. Anatoly, am I missing something? No, I, I think everything is, is fine. Okay. I think. And I'll pause here. we eight minutes over. My apologies for that. Sorry. It was very very high level on the tip of an iceberg uh, and the I hope question it was helpful. for you yes on, on this screen at the top you have solve a challenge does that mean that someone can put a challenge question up there and that anybody that would like to contribute can contribute to it so solve a challenge uh, was a uh, was our idea to help people with some initial projects because when new people come in they they don't have anything in mind that they can work on right or they they don't think that they have a problem to work on even though the problems coming up all the time every time right that's why engineers even exist uh but to help with that, to help with a little bit of a, you know, wheels moving in our heads or in somebody's head, we're saying, you know what, you don't have anything in mind, try out some of our, our challenges. Now, your question about posting a challenge, we did talk about this and potentially exposing that for different companies. They're saying, you know, we don't want to invest into solution, let other people solve that and we can maybe it's you know propose a challenge it could be an option going forward for sure my students use uh challenges uh for uh uh and the uh, end of course project and use it very successfully All right. I okay. think if there is no other questions, I will uh, let you go. Again, apologies for a little bit longer time to be taken. And I'll yeah. be posting everything related to this webinar uh, and sending an email about that uh, with a reference to previous webinars as well, because we talked about all of these different tools uh, and we have webinar about each and every one of them. From previous Thanks, a lot. Thanks very much. Yes. Thank you for joining. Thank, thank, thank you, you for inviting us. Great rest of the day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Goodbye now. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. bye.